What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Cool Colas here, and you are now tuning into a new episode of the Pro Black Blurred Kingdom Podcast. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about something that crossed my mind because of the movie that I just saw. I want to talk to you all today about why, not why actually, whether or not Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness was a top five Marvel movie. On top of talking about that, I'm going to go into a few other things, such as comparing this movie to other movies that I consider to be top tier amongst Marvel Studios movies. And I also want to talk a little bit about the formula that Marvel Studios has created for their movies to make them as good as they are. And then I want to go into a few other things including whether or not this is a top five movie. And I want to talk a little bit about overrated Marvel movies as well, too. So, I had a chance to see Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness last week with the wife. And I just have to say, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Literally, I thought this movie was surprisingly well done and I wasn't sure what to expect quality wise with this movie, given that the first Doctor Strange was average at best, but I was wrong. Although the bar was set low, it far exceeded what I thought it would be, especially with the movie going with this multiverse gimmick similar to what Spider-Man No Way Home did. And that was literally five months before. So, I mean, this was very recent. But this movie had a great storyline with um, America Chavez being this dimension traveler who somehow ended up in 616 Strange's world and was on the run from an individual who was performing what Strange found out to be was witchcraft. Now, I want to kind of give you all a quick review of what happened in the movie and tell you all about some of the things that took place. That way you can kind of get an idea of what all happened. So at this point, everything else that I'm going to say is pretty much a spoiler for the entire movie. So if you haven't really seen it, I probably wouldn't listen to this, actually. What we later found out about this whole witchcraft thing was that it was Wanda's little crazy ass who was behind it and that her ass clearly didn't learn from the shit that happened in WandaVision. I mean, Wanda had control of the dark hole to increase the strength of her powers and was being possessed by it. She was trying to capture America Chavez to drain her of her powers. And she wanted to do this to ultimately travel to a universe to be with the children that she magically created back in WandaVision. And the plan was clearly not well thought out and made by a loony with literally all of her damn screws loose. Doctor Strange tried to talk her out of it, even to the point of trying to remind Wanda that she was not a mother and what she was doing was wrong. And this eventually led to her to calling out his hypocrisy and how he's made the multiverse spill over into their world. And the many times he has gone out of his way to create problems for his own desires. And after that, Strange Wong and some other sorcerers tried to hold off Wanda because, I mean, she was dragging everybody who she was fighting at this point. They struggled to try to stop her. And Strange and, and America Chavez end up taking off in order to find the Dark Hole to battle against Wanda. Well, originally it was because they were running from her. But then it became a thing of them trying to find the Dark Hole in another universe. Meanwhile, Wanda possesses the body of her 838 version who goes on a killing spree and she ends up showing up in the world that Doctor Strange and America end up getting kidnapped in and she ends up killing this group called the Illuminati Heroes that are holding, again, 616 Strange in an America captive. And then this is led by that world's Baron Mordo. She shows up there to get Chavez and has to go through Mr. Fantastic, Black Bolt, Professor X, Captain Marvel, who is Maria Rambo, and Captain Carter, who was played by Haley Atwell, that plays the 616 Peggy Carter, if you all did not know. 
Wanda savagely murders all of them, with Captain Marvel being the most difficult to defeat of them all and goes on this monstrous rampage after she kills her too. Eventually, while on the run, Strange gets the dark hold of his own after tussling with a very deranged and corrupted version of Doctor Strange on a different dimension than the one he was originally captive on after he got free. And this Strange kind of resembled the Strange that we saw that was getting real corrupted and demented and evil and shit back on the What Ifs show, if you all haven't seen that. And he ends up getting in a fight with him and killing him and is assisted by the previous Earth's Christine. And if you all don't know, Christine is the original love interest of Doctor Strange, who he basically wanted to have a relationship with, but he messed it up every time and pretty much every dimension it seemed like. So eventually Chavez is taken by Wanda. Strange then uses the dark hole to possess the body of the corpse Strange that was running originally with America in the very beginning of the movie. And when she showed up to the 616 Earth, she actually showed up with his body. He possessed that corpse. He then used it to stop Wanda from taking America's power. So he's now possessing it and, and, and using the body to basically try to fight her back. And eventually the two fight and, and Strange uses the dead corpse, like I said, as an avatar. And eventually he tries to convince Chavez that she might be strong enough to fight Wanda after he ends up breaking the hold that Wanda had on her. America has a tussle with Wanda. You know, she gets a couple licks in and shit, but it's clear that Wanda is way too damn strong and she just decides to give Wanda what the hell she wanted. And, you know, the truth is, is that I think they all knew that Wanda's plan didn't make no damn sense, no way. So that probably was the best thing is just to show her like the shit was kind of janky. So she takes her to this dimension where her kids are real and she attempts to be a mother to them like she planned, but she just ends up like scaring the shit out of these kids because even with them not even like knowing who she was or what she was trying to do, they knew that there were some screws on and what she ended up doing was hurting their real mom. Cause the real mom, the real Wanda in that, in the universe was there and she ended up hurting her because she was in this mindset of these are my kids and I'm here to take care of you. Yada, 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 yada. But really she was deranged and she ended up injuring the mom in the process of this low conflict. And basically, at the end, she realized that she fucked up a lot of shit and she was like, I'm just going to have to stop this after everything that I've done. And after she accepts defeat, she ends up having like all the shit in the area that she was in collapse on her. And now it's a mystery as to whether or not Wanda is actually dead or not. It looked like she's dead, but I mean, they have a way where, you know, if they wanted to bring her back, they probably could in, in some way. But I don't know. Basically, that ended up leading to the end of the movie at some point. Now that I give you that short synopsis, I want to kind of give you my thoughts. So I want to kind of give you all what I felt were pros and then what I felt were cons as well, too. Starting with the pros. First of all, the action in this movie was superb and so were the graphics and the lighting and the augmentation shit that they do in these strange movies. It, it, it was on point before, but it was really on point in this movie too. I thoroughly enjoyed the visible aesthetics and the storyline was on point as far as the way that they told it. There was a twist in having Wanda be the villain given the cutscene with her and strange the trailers it made it seem like she was going to be aiding him in this movie and they twisted it around and she ended up being the villain i thought that was cool also i just gotta say elizabeth olsen the actress who plays wanda who plays scarlet witch did a phenomenal job as wanda and she has created in my opinion such an amazingly complex character like I'm, I'm very impressed with what she's done with the character she's managed to body the formula of creating a strong female super character i'm not gonna say superhero because she ain't no damn hero after that movie but super character who is seen as a badass in the eyes of the viewers but she's also flawed and she's not really portrayed as this feminist icon who takes pleasure on beating down men who she believes wronged her but she's more so t a tormented woman who longs to be a mother 
And she's still feminine as well, too, and not overbearing or wearing the idea of being a powerful woman like it's an actual personality or some type of badge of honor or some shit like that. She also did a good job of making people feel bad for her, too, even if that shit that she was trying to do didn't make no damn sense. I mean, let's be real. Anybody who has a heart and has watched that movie probably felt some type of way about like everything that Wanda's lost. They probably say, yeah, she crazy. But at the same time, they're like, well, damn, I feel bad for her because it feels like after what happened with the whole Avengers thing, like the, the third and the fourth movie, it feels like she lost everything and gained nothing after all the help that she gave them. And it feels like she's always been in a, in a position where somebody was either taking things away from her or controlling her life. So one could definitely feel some type of understanding for the things that Wanda has been through. In my opinion, I thought the movie was honestly what Spider-Man No Way Home should have been as a multiverse movie and what Venom Let There Be Carnage should have been as a love story movie. And what I mean by that is the multiverse thing was well told and they did just enough without it being extra. And them having to explain too many characters that they just threw into the fray. And there was enough shock value in familiar actors and actresses like, for example, Captain Carter and Charles Xavier, who was in that Illuminati group. But it also wasn't over the top. It was just enough of what we needed. And then as a love story, it portrayed the unhappiness of Doctor Strange while seeing Christine marry that one nigga. And, you know, of course, here we go again, y'all with that interracial dating shit that they throw into every damn movie or every show or every commercial. But anyway, uh, we see Strange grappling with how his love for Christine is so vast that it exists with with inversions of her that are in other dimensions. And I think he even said something like that in the dialogue. It's like, no matter what universe you're on, I still love you. Like, it, it kind of portrayed like a love story to a certain extent. They also closed that chapter out pretty nicely, too, by allowing this Christine to tell him that he deserves happiness while also allowing the Christine of his world to kind of do her thing. And then it transitioned rather smoothly, in my opinion, into this new beginning, especially as you look at the post credit scene. In the post credit scene, Doctor Strange meets with Clea, who in the comics is known as the niece of Dormammu, and eventually becomes his wife. And I could go on and on, but this movie just has a lot of great stuff to offer. The story worked, the action worked, the humor was there, but it wasn't too much, and it, it wasn't overkill like they sometimes do in these Marvel movies. The villain-to-hero dynamic was complex, and it f just followed... Uh, a very well-written script and I just felt like there wasn't a lot that was like unexplained but at the same time there was a lot of stuff to kind of look forward to with what was now going to happen in the next Doctor Strange movie so again I was very impressed with all of that now as far as the cons go I can only think of one very big con that bothered me about the movie Doctor Strange 2's biggest issue is something that has absolutely nothing to do with the actual storyline of the movie, but more so, what was not told. Doctor Strange 2 unfortunately felt like Doctor Strange 3. It felt like there should have been something in between Doctor Strange 1, which came out in 2016, and, and Doctor Strange 2, which came out this year. It's like there should have been a Doctor Strange 1 that came out in 2016. There should have been a Doctor Strange 2 that came out maybe in 2019. And then there should have been a Doctor Strange 3, and that would have been the movie that we literally just saw. The reason why I say this is an issue is because it's clearly an issue of continuity. This is present especially in their refusal to properly address the forgotten Baron Mortal post-credits issue that happened at the end of Doctor Strange 1. Remember when Baron Mortal was on some petty Eobar Thawne type shit and was going around snatching powers from sorcerers and shit and he snatched the magic from that man who was able to use his magic to walk and had Duke crippled on the floor and shit and then he whispered and he was like, too many sorcerers. 
that was clearly supposed to lead into a storyline where he went after Strange after what happened with uh, I don't know how to say his name K, um, K. Silius, I think that's how you say his name and all the rules that Strange broke as a sorcerer instead the second movie chose to tell the story as if we have already clued in to the beef between Strange and Mordo like this shit has been in progress for a while and he's just now all of a sudden famously known to be on the hunt to kill him and they made mention to that as if like we kind of already knew that and it's like no we ain't no we didn't know that you just told us that that's what happened that's our first time hearing it if you remember that post credit scene though he was just beginning to have his obsessive wanda like moment they painted mortal's character in this movie like we knew about their past and to be honest unless you are a comic head who enjoys dr strange comics you probably would be pretty flabbergasted that they even jumped to a beef between the two of them anyway if i had to rate this movie I'd probably give it somewhere between a 8.6 and an 8.7 out of 10. It was a slightly flawed, excellent movie, if I had to say so myself. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to compare this movie to other movies that could potentially be in my top five out of the Marvel movies. And I'm going to be honest with y'all. There's so many that are very good to me. So I really don't know what I would pick where. So as we talk, I'm going to kind of go through it and eventually I'm going to tell you what my list is. So if I had to pick the movies that were in the running though, here's my list of, of the ones that I would say. Captain America Winter Soldier, Avengers Infinity War, Shang-Chi, Thor Ragnarok, Black Panther, Avengers Endgame, the original Avengers, Captain America Civil War. Those are the ones that immediately come into my head. Now that I kind of threw a good majority of them out there, I'm going to go ahead and add Dr. Strange into the mix. And I want to take some time to think at the end of this podcast episode, I, I'm probably going to just try to give you all a, a top five from that, including maybe a few that I may have forgotten. And when I'm done, I'll reveal whether or not it's in my top five, Dr. Strange, that is. All the movies I named either wowed me or impressed me to a degree I wasn't expecting. And I honestly feel like a big part of it is Marvel movie producers outside of Sony. And I feel like Marvel has found a way to cook up a perfect recipe or a good recipe, at least for a movie that will at least be a seven out of 10. And this is done by a combination of things, which include good action, good storytelling, interesting character development, a certain level of humor or whimsicality, and in some cases, the proper amount of shock value needed in either introducing an anticipated character, bringing back a character or actress everyone adored, or merging some worlds of some sort. They do such a great job of portraying and producing these movies, and it feels like it, it's so good sometimes that certain things in these movies end up becoming memes in social media almost I'll even say too I, I meant to tell y'all about this I'll even say too I was cracking up at two memes that I saw recently online and one of them was about Wanda and it said who's winning in a fight to get their, their child or children back first Holly Berry or Wanda and I was dying when I saw that y'all I was like who even came up with this shit, man? <laughs> By the way, y'all, I'm going with Barry. I think that she's clearing low to mid difficulty. Come on, y'all know it's true. Barry is clearing low to mid difficulty. Also, I saw one about America Chavez where someone said, Marvel really made a Latina superhero whose powers are crossing the border. I was like, dog, look at the, the, the sense of humor of our people, dog. <laughs> Like, y'all know one of us probably made that meme. <laughs> like, that's that's legit ruthless, though. I, I need y'all to understand something, though, family. Like, black people have always had an amazing and resilient ability to use humor as a means to get through anything and even be creative. And, you know, and think about outside of the box. And I just see memes like that. I'm just like, who came up with this, man? Like, it's, that's kind of funny, low-key. Y'all know that's funny. 
So anyway, now let's now talk about Black Panther a little bit because I know I had mentioned it a little bit or a second ago to talk about my top five movies, but I want to talk about that in relation to f- the formula that Marvel has created for its movies. So Black Panther is not only a prime example of the Marvel f- for the Marvel Studios formula for for perfect or great movies, but it's also in a, a template that Marvel, in my opinion, has used for other movies to make them good. For example, Black Panther had a certain way that it was written, and then when they wrote Shang-Chi, they used that same type of template to write the storyline for that movie as well, and it worked very well. So, Black Panther... In, in, in my opinion, was a cultural masterpiece. And ultimately, what worked about it was that it was a predictable movie that was excellent. And you really knew what was going to happen. Let's be real. You knew what was going to happen. You knew T'Challa would inherit the throne. You knew the villain would be someone related to Wakanda. You knew it would bring up a polarizing topic that seldom talked about in media You knew that the villain may possibly take over the throne somehow. You knew T'Challa would get it back and it had everything that you needed, you know. And and then, you know, there there were a few flaws, but it had basically everything you needed. And then the Killmonger character just, just stole the damn show. And when you think about all that, you have to look at the movie Shang-Chi and say, it literally followed suit of the success of that movie. It it just did. Black Panther, in my opinion, set the tone for top tier Marvel movies because it's almost as if the majority of the Marvel Studios movies that have come out since then were top tier or at least very good, with the exception of Captain Marvel, Black Widow and the Eternals, which were all average or below average. I'm just hoping they find a way to make this next Black Panther story interesting when they put Namor in as the suspected villain because I don't know how in shit they plan to top Michael B. Jordan's performance as Killmonger because whether you agree with the character's ideals or not, it's hard to not to deny that Michael B. Jordan's best acting role ever was as Killmonger. And I mean, let's be real, y'all. He probably was one of the best super villains ever. And maybe even one of the best villains ever that's been portrayed in a movie. Let's be real. Like, he did a dope-ass job. Let's be real. Now, let's talk a little bit about overrated movies. Now, I know a lot of you all who are listening to me right now probably are going to be a little upset when I say this. But Spider-Man No Way Home was an overrated movie. I, I'm sorry to say it. it was. It was an overrated movie. And I know a lot of y'all prob- at this point are probably like, cool, Colas. Hey, why didn't you say Spider-Man earlier? Like, what, what made you not name that? That movie was dope. Like, wasn't that a top-tier movie? I mean, I ain't hear you list that movie. What's up? And I would say, yeah, I didn't do it on purpose. And that's because it's not in my running for being a top-tier movie. It just isn't. The movie was good, but it was overrated. And this is the thing that most people need to understand when it comes to comic movie ratings. When it comes to perspective, you have to consider the lens that one is watching it from. Some people are fans of the particular comic brand, so they may be a big comic head. Some people are not fans at all, and they just like to see some action or some supernatural matters happen or whatever and not even understand one lick of what they're even watching. And then in some cases, it's a hybrid. I personally am one of those hybrid people, and I'll explain what I mean by that. When I grew up, I wasn't into comics much outside of Sonic the Hedgehog, as I previously told y'all in an, in another episode. If y'all haven't seen the episode, go watch it. It's the one where I talk about was uh, Sonic the Hedgehog at the 10 out of 10. Anyway, when I would hear about a movie that was coming out about a certain character 
like a certain Marvel character in the, in the series, I would do research on the character beforehand to understand where the producers may go with certain stories. And sometimes that research may be reading a comic. Sometimes it entailed me doing some research on Google or Wikipedia just to kind of know like what these characters did. Or sometimes it meant watching another show to see how the character may have been portrayed in the past and other different things. That's, what I mean when I say hybrid, though, between those two lenses, once you've designated what, what lens a movie is being seen from, you have to consider what catches the attention of that viewer. And in some cases, people like different things. Some people like graphics. Some people like bells and whistles. Some people like action. Some people like good storytelling. Some people like fan service and many other things. It really just depends. But because I'm a writer, I know when I'm being overly razzle-dazzled and someone is just giving me extra shit. Spider-Man No Way Home was a movie that appealed to mostly comic heads, but was all bells and whistles to appeal to everyone else. I mean, you had these throwback villains and corresponding actors. You had Murdoch showing up in the MCU, showing that the Marvel TV shows were connected to the movies. And you had all the previous Spider-Man and even specific scenes that mimicked events that took place in one of the other movies, like Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man catching MJ to resemble what happened with Gwen. And I think there were so many pops and surprises and appearances and things like that, that mystified the audience that, people are like oh this is great look at everything that they decided to just throw at us and let me be clear that's good that's very good as a matter of fact but here is the issue i have i believe all of that was used to compensate for a storyline that in my opinion fell flat i mean for Spider-Man to literally request Strange's help so that he and his friends could all intend MIT together seem like a low stakes thing for such a big dramatic sacrifice. I guess fuck the idea that Mysterio just told the world that you ain't shit. Hell, why in the hell would Doctor Strange even go to such great lengths to entertain this janky ass spell? He could have literally created a spell to make niggas forget Mysterio even existed and change the way that shit even happened in the first place. And one could argue this is something a kid would do. A kid would, you know, ask for somebody to kind of get him and his friends in college together and stuff like that. But I also didn't like that it felt like the whole Mysterio thing was an afterthought because it felt like someone people weren't really after him for real like yeah there was the scene with um him and the police and all this other stuff but it just felt like it felt like there wasn't a hero who was trying to seek him out to try to say hey spider-man you're a threat now or even a hero to have his back against another villain who was trying to seek him out it just felt like there should have been something there that wasn't there i can't figure out what it is but something should have been there and it made the original purpose of this whole multiverse thing fall flat as a storyteller, I recognized the issues and I couldn't let them slide, y'all. I just couldn't. But the truth is, a lot of y'all were just so dazzled by appearances, you forgot how much the plot suffered. A big death, big changes, guest appearances, all created in the name of something that was so minuscule. Now, don't get me wrong, it was a good movie, but it definitely was not as good as a lot of y'all are making it out to be. Anyway, I could go on and on, but these are my feelings on that movie. <laughs> so... Now, finally, I would like to talk to y'all about what my top five Marvel movies are since this is the moment I know you all have been waiting for. I know a lot of people have been talking about it, too, on their own and making lists of what they think is the best movie and putting them in a certain order and all this other stuff. And it's so funny because even on Twitter, there's this queen who's known as the Nostalgia Queen. She goes by the name at Snow Black on Twitter. And, and shout out to her, by the way. She's cool as hell. And she talks about a lot of blurred stuff from comics and Disney movies to other black culture stuff. And she always be having these viral tweets that pop up because she's really popular on social media or Twitter, at least. But anyway, I mentioned her because she had this post where she was asking people to rank these the set of movies. And she said that the movies that she wanted people to put in order of the ones they liked the most, the one they liked the least was Doctor Strange, Shang-Chi, Black Widow, Captain Marvel, Spider-Man No Way Home. And originally I commented on her post and I said, 
I think it's number number one is Doctor Strange. I think number two is Shang Chi. Number three is Spider Man No Way Home. Number four is Black Widow. And number five is Captain Marvel. And then I said, and I'm willing to die on that hill. And now that I think about that comment, I just have to say, I might not be willing to die on that hill. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to have to disagree with my damn self on that one, actually. And, and I just never rethink that, you know? I had to allow myself to kind of reconfigure what my favorites would have been. So, now that I've done the reconfiguring, I want to talk a little bit about what I feel in this very moment are my top-ranked Marvel movies. And this right here will tell you whether or not Doctor Strange is a top five movie. I think that the best movie, so number one, I think is Black Panther. Number two, I think was Avengers Infinity War. Again, Infinity War, not in game, Infinity War. Number three for me, I think was Captain America Winter Soldier. Number four for me, I think was Shang-Chi. And then number five, I believe is Thor Ragnarok. Now that you heard my list, I guess you could say that from my perspective, Doctor Strange is not a top five Marvel movie. But let's just kind of humor that and see if it's a top 10 at least. Top 10 Marvel movie. I'd say number 6 is the first Avengers. I'd say number 7 is probably Guardians of the Galaxy. And I'd probably put Doctor Strange at least at 8. Doctor Strange 2. With 9 being Avengers Endgame and 10 being Captain America Civil War. So, that's my list. There you have it. Doctor Strange 2. Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness is a top 10 Marvel movie. Not a top 5 movie. Alright y'all. So that's all I have for y'all today. I hope you all enjoyed the episode and got to hear a little bit about my opinions on the new Doctor Strange movie that's come out. Feel free to tune into other podcast episodes that I have or follow me on social media at Colos Creative on Instagram to figure out the latest and greatest news as to what's going on in the cool Colos world. I will be having a lot more topics coming soon, so I would like for you to continue to stay tuned and check it out. Other than that, I hope you all have a great day and I will talk to you all soon. Peace.